Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today we are going to do something super cute I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. It looks like a dash hound. So hands up if you think it looks like a dash hound because uh, it's cool. It's very cool and I have lots of good um, ideas too. So, yeah, can everyone hear me? Someone tell me. Yes, Cindy King. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. Um, there shouldn't be commercials, but mm, I can't do anything about it. Apologies. Skip them. It's all good. Guten Morgen. Yes, good morning to you. Uh, Elizabeth Bragan. All right. Good morning. Uh, Robin. Hey. Good morning, Leah. Sojourney. Tracy, we're going to say. Hi, <laughs> Faye Cross. Um, awesome. We got lots of people here today. Um, this quilt by Sweet Pea is super cute. I'm just telling you, it is super cute. And what caught my attention, what usually happens when I am, you know, trying to pick something that I like, I looked at it. Hi, Nana, by the way. Hello. We can hear you down here. All right, Rhonda. Yeah. Um, something catches my attention and it's super cute. And what it was for this one. <laughs> Good morning from around the corner. All right, Arlen. Arlen. Let me ask you, Lynn, have you been doing embroidery? Have you? Have you? You need to. Because Christmas stuff is coming up. And I think the world needs more uh, penguin mug rugs. So, oh, Jude, hello. Hello, Miley. Are you good, Miley? I bet. I bet. I love that. Miley likes my voice. So, yeah. Ugh, commercials. I know. I, I'm, a, I'm apologizing, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. I'm pretty sure it said November you don't have a choice. So I turned it off every single time. So, you know, it sucks. I'm not happy with it, but I mean, I guess I could move the channel somewhere else, but you know. So there we go, Judy Frida Smith. Hello, haven't done embroidery for two years, but welcome back, Frida. This is a great place to start. We have tons of fun here. Saturday is our fun day and is also our happy day. So I'm going to put you guys on the desk and we're going to talk fabric. So on this design, it has, hi, Jesse, um, it has background. So you have a um, sky and then you have the ground. Now the way they have it, it looks really cute. So they have uh, snow and then they have a really pale blue but you know me I like to think outside the box because you know that's kind of where I live and I was thinking a couple of other ideas you don't have to do it exactly the way they do it so one of my ombre ones now obviously I don't have enough to do but even a lighter one I think that would look fantastic uh, today I'm doing the five by seven uh, and if you do and you have like a charm pack of all the same, that would be great. Nails, I went shopping at Holo Taco uh, just to treat myself. And these are magnetic so you can see the shift in colors. And then I have this one. See, it's reds. But can you see the shift? Yeah, it's awesome. And I broke one and it really hurts. So we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> So I thought that would be really nice, but then I took it a little further and I thought, what about a sunset? What about an orange ombre or this pink ombre? I think that would look cool all the way around. I just think it would. Um, you don't have to stick to daytime. Of course, if you have the printed fabric that's like clouds and birds, you can use that. But I thought this was really neat. So this is um, Periwinkle, I believe. Yep, Periwinkle, and it's from uh, Missouri Star. So, and it is uh, cotton solid, American-made brand cotton solid, Periwinkle yardage. So 
I like that. For some reason, that color just caught my attention. Um, and you could go something lighter too. But light, light, light. Yeah, pink, pink, pink. I like, I really do think that would look good. Completely different, but I think it would look good. Um, this one is Sea Glass Yardage, also from Missouri Star. But I thought that would be just nice, closer to what um, uh, Sweet Pea did, for sure. So, thinking outside the box, I have a whole bunch of white fleece. And I thought that would be perfect for the snow. So I'm going to be adding some texture to it. You guys probably can't see it, but it looks really nice. Now you can um, do like a green and make it grass. It does not have to be snow. I think it would still look good, uh, really. But, okay, so the one I'm going to use, ready? Perfect. Can you see the swirly snow in it? Perfect. I use a black one with this same design and I love it. And I just, I, you know, came upon this one. Welcome winter, uh, swirling snow, two yards. So this is also from, um, 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 Missouri star. So just cause everyone asks me and I don't always have the info. So I left it in the bag just to show you. Now you guys can see it a little bit better. How perfect is that for the top fabric? And because I have two yards of it, that's more than enough. Um, thinking, you know, more than enough for anything big. Now, gingerbread cookies, uh, I kind of picked like a boring brown. Eh, it's like tan or something. I don't know. But this and this, so soft texture. And yeah, the blue swirls, that is what I'm doing. I just had some other ideas. And don't forget, it doesn't have to be a snowy day. Uh, it can be green grass day. I mean, a lot of places don't have snow at Christmas. So yeah, Joyce, welcome, welcome, welcome. Leah says, I think I have that in my stash. Well, that would be cool. It has white dots for the snow. Yeah, you could see that, huh? And then the swirly parts, are like the wind blowing and that is going to be to me a hundred percent perfect gorgeous so that is that missouri star um I, for sure cindy do you change your start time sometimes i can't keep up with you always 10 o'clock sometimes i you know start broadcasting a little bit early and that way everyone gets their notices and can join us but always 10 o'clock so if you're here at 10 Perfect. Perfect. So I'm really happy with this find. I had to dig around. Um, Sarah, my husband just told me that I needed to leave the house. Not yet. Sue is on. <laughs> bad husband. Bad husband. 10 o'clock. That's what it is. That's Sue time. So just some ideas. Now the colors. Um, gingerbread men, I thought I'd make the outline a bit darker. And I have white in my machine right now. And then we have some candies, a candy cane and stuff to do. And dash hounds are traditionally, well, one of the colors they can be is um, kind of a reddish brown, kind of like Odie is. And I'm going to see if that's going to work. I'm not sure. It's not quite the right color, but yeah. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Or are we not just shouting out colors? You're not. <laughs> You're not. Uh, which is funny. Um, a reminder too, tonight is the time change. So next week it uh, might be a little bit different if you don't have a time change. So just saying. Uh, spring forward, fall back. So we turn the clocks back, which is awesome. So let's go to the machine and see where we're at so yes we are gonna do so five by seven hoop i have the um what is it cutaway soft cutaway lovely for quilt backs nice and soft i have i don't know what brand it is but it is batting bob and police we're all good man we're all good so we're gonna start with the background because you always start with the back layer and again this is five by five so if you have charm squares or an accu quilt with five by five you could 
pre-cut all of your background fabric or like, you know, a rectangle shape. You could pre-cut all of your background fabric and lickety split, get it done. So, which is a good idea. Um, so yeah, there. Okay, so we're gonna do an outline. Now I am stitching with white, but I can see it okay. So we'll let that go. Uh, you guys might not be able to, but it's okay. I don't know why I didn't change it, but I didn't. I usually like to try to have something that stands out. Oh, I'm so excited about this sky fabric, the snowy sky. Yes, the snowy sky. So I want to make sure I catch it big enough be, or cut it big enough because we have to remember on this layer, we have to remember seam allowance. So as always, see, you know, I guess you could see the puff in there. As always, the seam allowance has to be the side, the top, and the other side. We're going to trim here, but nowhere else. So I made that a little bit big. So my seam allowances. Now, when you're placing the fabric down, make sure you cover all of it, all of it. So if I was to put it like here, I'd be short. So give yourself enough and you don't want the edges in either. So that looks pretty good. I can trim it down after. I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, this is so perfect. So excited. It's going to look great. And what else is going to look great is the fleece. Fleece snow. Yeah, perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something I never do, but wait till it stops. Stop. Yeah, all right. And I'm just going to do this because I know there's going to be satin stitches across and it's going to cover it up nicely. Satin stitches, Lynn's favorite stitches. And this is a pretty basic cut. So I'm just breaking my own rules here. So that's the top. I love it. I might do this bigger, I think. It's so cute. And now we're going to do the bottom with a little bit of texture for my fleece. So we're going to get the outline and then we're going to do the exact same thing. So it's perfect. Make sure nothing here gets caught. So this is a little under the line, but that's okay because this is over. So you get a nice join. Now for this one, I'll take it to the desk to trim it, I think. So seam allowance, seam allowance, seam allowance, trim. So on the inside, you need to trim it. On the outside, you do not. So I could have paid more attention to the sizes, but eh, what are you going to do, right? Make sure it's covered. I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but the fleece is going to be absolutely fantastic for this little bit of texture never hurt don't overdo it i'm gonna do a bit of bling too just so everyone knows it's gonna be a little blingy uh, i think i have to have a candy cane that sparkles so let's see do you think i can trim it out here i could try fleece is pretty forgiving stuff so it's just a rule breaking kind of saturday maybe i don't know so there yeah, that's super easy just because it's not complicated. I never do it, but you guys can see exactly why I never do it because it's not a great cut. I did better on the first one, but it's not a great, great cut. It'll be fine, though. It'll be fine. So next, I'm going to leave my white in and we're just going to do like outlines of the candy. And it's kind of like candy in the distance. It'll look cute. I left the white. You could do gray or something like that. Nothing too dark, though. Maybe the gray in here, the bluey gray. It's just fast. It's all good. I like it. So, any questions? Love the bling. Yes. Yes. Good that is white fleece and not yellow fleece. <laughs> nice, Lynn. Nice. Okay, now we're going to do the covering stitches. Hopefully there is a zigzag so I have a get out of jail free card. Uh, by that, I mean if it does a zigzag first, like that, yep, I'm in. 
the zigzag to me is very important because it will uh, let you know if you did a really really crappy job on your trimming or not and it gives you just that extra minute to trim it so it doesn't show and then no one will know and you don't have to tell anyone i could zoom in here uh yeah i could see how that looks eh, that's a lot better isn't it for sure bling 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 yeah lynn that was funny good for you i do like it actually uh yeah so the white looks good again you could use green if you're um where you live if you don't have a ton of snow at or any snow at christmas or you just don't like snow then you could do green so i'm in love with this i think this is the perfect fabric um let's see any questions anybody any no all right now we are going to do the gingerbread guy so i'm just gonna leave my white on and i'll change in a minute so we're gonna do of course the outline first and while the outline is stitching i am going to gather up my fabric now because i'm doing a five by seven you know it's not a whole lot of fabric you need cut it up pre-cut it quite easily you wouldn't even have to be that uh, accurate about it it just makes it easier if you just have piles you could also use your cutter if you want just make sure that you make it a little bit bigger than what the design is so it'll catch right so I just guesstimate I'm like whatever I'll just have it here I'm only doing one today so yeah he's uh, he's pretty small so that covers him and I think that'll look great and then I'm gonna change thread it's actually better if you cut the salvage part off because then you won't make any mistakes and get it caught in there because it does show he's cute so for this I am going to go back to the desk because this is a little more complicated and I really don't want to do it um, at the machine because I don't think I could very well. It needs to be turned. So my Nom Nom scissors and I'm going to do it carefully. So the way I do it for new people or people that have not done embroidery for two years i hold it with one piece i can zoom in if you want let's see yeah that's a much better view hopefully it's clear enough big granny so i put it under like this now i do it backwards uh i can do it the other way uh these duckbill scissors this part is supposed to be smooth so you don't catch it on anything uh, like fleece and this part is hard to get into but I can do it so remember to turn your hoop so you have the correct angle to trim so Lynn got actually really good at trimming she she was a master and fussy placing fussy cutting I have a few tricks for that I don't spend a whole lot of time on it and it works so turn I don't know why I'm more comfortable doing it backwards, but I just am. It's, um, as Tula Pink would say, it is not rocket science. It's trimming, whatever works for you. As long as you get a nice trim, you want to leave a little bit over the line, uh, but not too much because we do want our satin stitches to cover everything. Now this is a little bit farther here but it's okay that doesn't look the greatest does it maybe i need more light that looks much better and even if i do this see them so a little bit here and a little bit there but it'll be absolutely fine so let's go to the machine and now i do have to change my thread so my gingerbread cookie um, you could also do a sugar cookie so if you don't do the snow you could do the gingerbread as a, a you know a different one and do white for all the cookies or 
whatever kind of cookies you want. You could also use a print if you wanted. Just make sure that it's not too overpowering with your sky background or your grass background, but it would fit in nicely there. So I'm gonna use a dark brown, of course, exquisite thread, and we'll see how it looks. Hopefully we'll get a zigzag, then I can guess on the color. I wanted it to stand out a bit, so. Oh yeah, I like it, I like it. I think if I used it lighter, then it, it would start to get, the whole thing would start to get a bit um, bland, I think. So zoom you guys in so you can, oh, wrong one. Oops, sorry, there we go. I fixed it. Oops, oops. I do it backwards too. Yeah, it, you know, it just doesn't matter. It's not rocket science. The duck bill is, it does help if you're doing something like batting. It helps you not get caught on it. So I try to do it the right way for that. But you know what? Never worry about it. Minor detail in life. Um, for sure. Is this a sewing and embroidery machine? Um, how do you angle tack down? Uh, it is both. It's a luminaire, I guess I say three, uh, cause I did the upgrades. It's called Captain Jack and that's just my name for it. Googly eyes. Oh, you can't see them close up. That's the only problem with close up. You can't see the googly eyes, man. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, and you can switch it over to sewing and they have a nice new pedal on it, that sort of thing. All these designs are digitized on the computer, although I will say that the um, machines come with a lot of, like this one specifically, comes with a lot of built-in designs and some pretty cool ones. So if you have a one or a two, upgrade it to three, and you get those long stitch designs that I did a video on when it's, um, you know, when it, it, it's pretty cool, actually. I did a video on it, and it's pretty cool. So, because I'm doing a small one, this isn't going to take long, uh, which I like. It's cool. Sorry, but I have to go. Windows being replaced. Okay, well, that's an important thing. So, uh, enjoy. Catch you later. Um, we'll watch later. Thumbs up for Sue. Yes, replay crew rocks for sure. These are the most difficult parts. So I'm really glad that you guys uh, got to see that part. So picking up, picking out the fabric, balancing it, and doing the bottom and the top, and gingerbread man. The rest is honestly just stitching. So. I might uh, pause for some questions as well. So, yeah. see how that goes. There you go, you can see it really well now. I think that looks great. I like him. Oh, we are gonna go back to white and we're gonna do the icing on the gingerbread man. Cause I think that'll look cool too. So I can't wait to get my new sewing area set up so I can get back to embroidery. Yeah, we'd love to see what you do. What What is the first thing you're going to do, Chris? Because, yeah, it's hard when you can't do embroidery. I actually really, really, really miss designing and stitching out my designs. I'm finding it rather difficult. Uh, not being able to do that. I know that sounds weird. I'm still stitching, but I'm not creating and everything I stitch is, you know, production. So it's not actually that much fun. So I wish I could go back to it, but I can't yet. So, you know, it's cold here. So no melting here. Cool. I finally got my Luminar XP3 watching videos on how to use it to check in to turn it on yet. You got it. It's it's pretty self-sufficient and actually pretty cool to use. It is uh, bells and whistles aplenty. My favorite thing is the projector on either side. So projector for doing 
embroidery and for sewing. It's um, pretty cool. Chris Yost, I need to finish my Kimberbell fall pillow. Cool. So for the scarf, I was kind of stuck on what colors to do. They have it in green and I don't know where my green went. I did have a green here. I was thinking bling would be wonderful there. I could use gold. What do you guys think of gold? Green or gold? Um, I'm in the process of going through all my fabric. We'll be donating some because I need to be honest and tell myself I'll never use all of it. Yeah, I'm not there yet. No, not there yet. It's so expensive here in Canada. I'll keep it all for a while and then do it. Well, I just messed up my gold thread 100%. So guys, hold on. I'm going to get what I need for sure. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Sorry, my, my special thread is stored behind there. So this is what I want to do. And it is King Star Metallic in a Christmas green. So I'm going to have a little bit of bling on this, but I'm not going to overdo it because then it looks too blingy. So a little bit here and there. And I thought metallic would look nice. Gold or um, red or something. I think it would look good. So let's see. Yep. Nice and bright. I like it. Let's see. It'll start doing the scarf kind of cool isn't it green 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 yes um snow it's going to be 80 degrees here wow holy crap that's pretty cool that's actually really cool for sure so any questions you guys let's see what time it is yeah 10 30 that's fine I have to go take a shower and get dressed and I'm going to go out for a while, which is nice. I'm looking forward to a break for sure. Yes, I love the stitching on it too. Nice. So the candy cane I am going to do uh, with just white, normal white. I could use silver, um, but metallic and red metallic. So here's the... Here's the red I'm going to use, which is Christmas red. So it'll go nice with the green. So I have everything kind of, you know, light and the scarf and the candy cane are going to show up. And it's going to look cool because it's going to be metallic. Now for the candy trees in the background, I'm going to use uh, bright colors like uh, pink and dark pink and a little bit of maybe orange or something like that. Um, and I think it's going to look really good. So yeah, I like the scarf. Nice and bright. Makes them stand out. Um, Susan Williams says this pattern is super cute, but thinking of getting the gnome one. Well, if you guys do go over to um, Sweet Pea, make sure you use the link either in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group or uh, use the link in the description. So it makes it easier for you guys to find it. And it's just kind of like help. So it's awesome. So what are we stitching next? I don't know, a little bit of snow. Oh yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? So look, they put uh, a little bit of you know, texture on it and I like it. All right, we're going to do the white. We're going to do the candy cane, and then the rest is just stitching. So, But I did want to show you guys how awesome this is. I want to get the red bling in there, though. So I'm changing back to white thread because the candy cane is um, white and red. I love candy canes, by the way. If you guys didn't know that, it's one of my favorite things, like, ever, is a candy cane. And a cinnamon heart, so, but not together. Ha <laughs> ha! I just realized the time. That's okay, we're almost done. It's And it's turning out really well so far. 
so we're doing the candy cane, which is actually the snowman's cane. So I think that's kind of cool. Hopefully, yeah, it looks like we do the red next, so I'll get there. So, do you guys have any questions about this? Um, hopefully I've gone through fabric and colors and different ideas so you can make it your own. And don't be afra afraid to step outside the box either. You, you can do this. It's um, kind of nice. Like I said, I think a sunset would look beautiful as a background and green grass. So all y'all in, uh, where is it, um, Texas? that you don't really get snow you can do green you can do a beautiful hot sunny evening so that's the start of the candy cane i like it i like it a lot and now we're gonna do the red and then i will ask any questions and if there aren't any we will we will call it a day because it's just stitching and it's easy. Make sure when you're done your block that you trim up your seam allowances because um, I've got way too much there. I normally just put them in a pile and do them all at once with a rotary, rotary color cutter. Um, that's how I do it. It's just easier. So red metallic. Red metallic, everyone. Oh, that's the hatch jump there. Annoying. Don't worry about that. It just means you have to trim it. Did it miss one? It may have. Or maybe it goes back. I don't know. That's cute though, isn't it? What do you guys... I, I can zoom in here. What do you guys think of the red? It's kind of great. The red and the green are just setting everything up. I like it. And a nice outline so it stands out on your snow. So I like it. I like it even more. Oh yeah, it's going back to do that one spot. Yeah, I like it. I like the texture in it. I love this too. And have a search around and find the perfect um, thread. Let's see, having quite a bit of trouble with my Luminar XP3 and Kingstar Metallic. Any suggestions? Never heard of that. All right, let me put the brown in so at least we get our gingerbread guy done. I have zero problems with it at all. Um, my first suggestion would be do not mess with the tension. You don't need to change anything with Kingstar Metallic. It's just like regular thread. And you saw me just stitch two and the green was kind of a complicated design on it and I didn't have any problems. So my first suggestion would be to do something like this where you know, um, you know absolutely that it works and that would be like a good start to it that didn't thread did it no that's weird so that's what i would do but it should not be any kind of a problem now it's going to jump over which is annoying but it's hatch see how it did that goodness it's annoying so ladies go out of the chat and hit the thumbs up um that would be awesome on my other brother machines, I have my King Star on a thread tree so that it pulls from the top. I don't have any need to do that. Um, I just don't have any issues. So it could be the design. It could be um, that you changed the... Um, what are we doing here? Oh, we're doing his outline. All right, I'll change it again. Then that's it. It could be the design... Um, just doesn't work with it or something like that. It could be a bunch of things, but I just stitched it on my Luminaire 2 slash 3 and I didn't have any problems. So, um, and a Luminaire 3 would be relatively new. So make sure that your tension is back to the uh, default and try. And you can try the other things that we use for um, 
metallic thread, but I really, my fingers are crossed that you can get it to stitch normally because it's really nice using metallic thread for everything you want. I really like it. So we've got cheeks and a face to do and then the dash hound is all stitching uh, so he's easy to do in the basic same colors. Let's go back to the desk here and then I can see a little bit better and you guys can see a little bit better. Needle size sometimes helps with metallic thread. Yeah, I actually haven't had any issues with it, but uh, I use a 7511 and I've never, even on uh, McDreamy, I haven't had any problems. Not saying that you're doing anything or anything, but um, New Needle, that's a good uh, start. That's one thing you could do because it might have a little burr in it, like a little bit of metal sticking out and cutting it. So yeah, you can. Burr on the hook. Yep. There you go, emery board. That's good, that's good, perfect. So what do you guys think of my gingerbread guy? He's kind of blank right now, but the colors, but see that the bling is just enough. There, perfect. It's just enough bling and you can see the design on the scarf, which is really nice. And the metallic thread just gives it a little bit of, you know, cool. I like it. I'm not going to be doing any more. Uh, the colors I'm going to be doing. So this is the, I don't quite like it, but that's the Dash Hound reddish brown that I'm going to use. His leash, I'm going to also do Christmas red. I don't want to do the Christmas decoration on the Dash Hound, so I'm just going to leave it as long as they don't leave a blank area for it. So yeah, it's, it's easy that way. And there's a couple more candies. So this is what candies are going to be and this. So kind of an orangey color. Uh, you could go darker too, but the ones I have are pretty dark. Um, maybe this one, this is just a tiny bit darker. Maybe that one's better. See the difference? Yeah, I think maybe a little bit more orange and less yellow would do. So this is what I'll be doing for the rest. And if I can't find a better, like, true dash hound color, then I will do it, um, I don't know if I do it black. Dash hounds can be black and tan. They can also be chocolate brown. They can also be um, a dapple, which has polka dots, but, you know... <laughs> The Dash Hound is what caught my attention. You can't put polka dots on it unless you redigitize it. And I don't do that because it's already perfect the way it is. So those are my color choices. And I'm always very happy to use King Star Metallic. I really love it. I really, really love it. So I hope you guys uh, go and get this. It's really cute. It's for four by four all the way up to seven by seven. Um, I was thinking for this one, if they had the big, 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 big size, I would do this one that size and just, cause that's 10, 10, 11 by 16. That would make for me, that would make me really happy. I'm just bind the outside and just make it, you know, as a wall hanging like that, but there isn't that big. That's really big. And you can't remember everyone, you can't, change the size of a uh, stitch file. You don't want to. You don't want to. So, okay, you guys, uh, let me see your work. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I will post a picture of it and I'll probably do the biggest block, this one, and see how it looks. So you could see someone needs to do the four by four because I'm always curious how the small small would work so thanks everyone for watching i hope you like this video please go ahead and like the video because that really helps everything susie hi sue and omal gang late but here i'll have to watch replay crew all right yes we appreciate that looks like y'all had fun now next week if you guys really like it i'll put a poll up and you can pick 
one. So don't forget to go and like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy stitching. I love this. I can't wait to do the dash hound. Bye everyone.